Hi there everyone, welcome back to Dandelion Delphi Tutorials. We're looking at the final of 2018 question 2.2, but this would be applicable to grade 11 and 12 learners. Typically in a normal year, we will complete the add table section, which is the database programming that we're dealing with today in term 3. So please try the final of 2018 first before you continue to watch. So this is question 2.2 of the final of 2018 and you're going to go to the tab sheet question 2.2 which contains the part for the Delphi code. And on there you'll see some buttons and you will be completing all those buttons. Also take note of the restore button, especially after you've done the update deductions and maybe your update didn't work correctly. It would be important to restore your database. In other words, it goes back to the original state before you made changes and then try it again after you've changed your code. So here is our first question. Press pause and try it yourself. Take note of all the code that was provided and make sure that you add your code after the comment that said enter your code here. Very important is when you're looping through a table, that you start with your dot first, you have your while not end of the table, and then your dot next all inside of the loop. And your next must not be inside of an if or an else, unless you're using a delete inside of a loop. So this is the basics, and then usually I just code in between. Remember now that we can't use dot filter, dot sort, or dot locate. So in order to find anything using add tables, you are going to have to loop through your table. I'm testing every record here. I'm testing the permanent field to see if it's false. Because the question asked me to find all the temporary people. And permanent was a field name, a yes, no field. And if it was true, it was a permanent employee. And if it was false, the person was a temp. So here I'm just displaying the surname with my hash nines to create those neat columns. The tab stops here at the top has been done for me. And then the first name. But what was very important here is that the number of children you have int to string around that field name. Children was a number field. And if you don't have int to string, your program is going to crash. And it's going to give you an error because you're trying to display a number field in a string property. And that is inside of your rich edit. To display a date time data type field, we would use date to string. And then for any other number, so whether it is double, integer, or currency, we'll use int to string or float to string f. But when you want to display a Boolean field, a yes no data type, you probably have to go and add an if statement to test if that field is true, and then maybe add a string that says yes or no, or true or false. As if we would use bool to string in here, we would not get nice output. We'll get negative 1 instead of yes, no, or true or false. So the no will indicate a 0, and then the yes will be shown as a negative 1. And that's not usually how we do our output. Now you can try question 2.2.2, the insert. Press pause, and I'll show you the memo soon. At the bottom of your table, after you've clicked the button, you would see your new record here at the bottom. So the insert and edit looks very similar. We start with the name of our table, then a dot insert, whereas when we're editing or updating it, we're going to have dot edit, but both of them then have a dot post at the end to post the changes to the database. And both of them also have the table names and field names on the left of the assignment statement to make changes to these fields. In this instance, it was hard code all the way through for all our fields, but this could be replaced with variables. In this instance, we had the name and the surname, the ID number, all as text data types. So I've put them in inverted commas. And then permanent was either true or false. So I've just used true. You could also use yes, but then you would have to put it in inverted commas. Or you could also add a negative 1 on the right of the assignment statement. And the number of children was 3, so it's very simple. Just add the 3 there after the assignment statement, which could be replaced with a 
integer variable if the question required you to get input from the user. Here is the last question and we had to make changes but take note of the sentence here at the top that says the user must select a record from the DB grid. That means that wherever that little black triangle sits that's the record we're going to make changes to. We don't have to search for this record we can just make the change to the one that the person clicked on. And we are going to make a change to the deduction field by increasing the deduction amount. That means take the existing amount and adding 1% of the gross salary to it. And here are some examples of when uh, payment number 112 was the active record and the change was recorded. This screenshot is of what the active record was before the change was made and then you'll see the deductions went up after this change. Press pause, I'm going to show you the memo now. So as I said before, remember your edit and your dot post. Remember to read from or write to, in this case, the correct table. Uh, we are making a change to the deductions field. We are able to make changes to more than one field at a time. We'll just place it between the edit and the post, as we did with insert. Then an assignment statement, and I want to add to the existing amount in my deductions. So that's why I'm using this field here. Plus, and then 1% of my gross salary must be added to that value, and that's what I'm doing after the plus here. Take note, there was no searching needed because remember we're making a change to the active record or the record that the user selected on the DB grid. Thank you for watching Dandelion Delphi tutorials. For more explanation on database programming, you would find that in book 2. I hope to see you soon.